Thank you. <clears throat> so, excuse me, uh, I've been traveling from two days ago from Burkina Faso back to Berlin, and uh, I just came back yesterday at 11 o'clock, and uh, the taxi took me to my office, and then there was a lot to do. I slept in the office, and now I am here, so my voice is a little bit affected, so excuse me for that. Um, I am very happy to be here, and it is a great honor for me to be introduced in London, in England, in this vice. Thank you very much. It is, I am proud of IBA for having made me International Fellowship of RIAB. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so I, I, I am just trying to work for my people. And if it is for this region that you made me international fellowship of your institution of IRIB, be, I will keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you. Before beginning with the lecture, I will one again like to say thank you to all those who contributed to make this meeting possible. And uh, of course, I would like to say thank you to all of you uh, for coming. And I am a native of Burkina Faso. Um, Burkina Faso is a country in which today, in the age of iPhone, internet, globalization, most of the people don't have a chance to attend primary education. More than 80% of the population are neither able to read nor write. In this part of the world, most of the people never heard the term of architecture or architect, but, but things are being built. Due to the lack of secure income to hire a professional, an architect, people build a house by themselves. And as a model, they just copy their neighboring house. When you build a house which is looking nice, everybody can and just copy it. Normally, they hire a mason who train himself to build, to reproduce the product. Ladies and gentlemen, in this part of the world, people are happy. When the world is straight and able to stand a rainy season, this is the world I am coming from. I suppose I don't need to explain to you how great a privilege it is for me to be standing before you today from Gando, my home village in Burkina Faso, to attend primary education and to come to Berlin to attend higher education and to have the opportunity to speak to you is a big, 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 big step. Believe me, millions of Africans would like to be here. I am very lucky. And I feel sometimes like the happiest man in the world. 
please don't expect me f a lecture about modern architecture in general or in special for development country. It will be asked too much. Instead, I will try to show you how together with the people of my home country, we are trying to build houses which respond to the need of the climate and, and, and are able to stand many, many rainy seasons. So I will try to. So this is Africa, the white one. This is Burkina Faso. As you can see, Burkina Faso don't have access to the sea. This is a problem because we don't have water. Do you understand me? Is it okay? Okay. This is Ouagadougou, a picture of Ouagadougou, the capital city of the country. Left, this one, they call it informal. Right, they call it formal. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what is formal and what is informal. The fact is, Ouagadougou has a problem. Every day, a lot of people are coming from the countryside to the capital city looking for better life. So they just come there and build their houses. But the government said it is informal. They just break it down and try to have another structure. This, ladies and gentlemen, has been made by the people, by the hand, by the people. And there you can find everything. You can make your hair, like you can see. You don't need to be, to be able to read to understand that you can have your hair cut there, or you can, to see this, it means you can come in and call somebody, you can have clothes, and you can have prepared mobile card, mobile phone card, you can make repairs of your bicycle. That's what the people need. They just build their house and they have their relationship. They can live, they can survive. They don't need nothing else. But the government said it's informal. What you don't know is that in Africa, we have a little problem. Due to the power of your economy and the power of your information, you, you are, your culture is the leading one today. And not that you're doing it, but you're putting other culture under pressure. We're trying to copy your way of life because we're seeing it everywhere in the movies, in information, in TV, that your way of life the best is. So what we do, we reject what we own and we try to reproduce your culture with the problem. We don't have the means to do it. We don't have the technician to do it. And that is a problem in Burkina Faso. I don't mean you directly. Uh, when I am here, it's because of you. So uh, we are sharing the same goals. But the fact, the way how life is today is a little problem. You understand me? Yeah, we're building in Burkina Faso houses like this one. We need air condition to be able to stay inside. Ladies and gentlemen, this in a country which belongs to the progress in the world is not the good solution. China today become an example for us, a big one. People just go to China to buy cheap merchandise, and by the way, they also copy the way China is a building. So like this building, and for the owner of this house, 
plastic tiles from China are not good enough to show his good test of architecture, he tried to give this concrete column a wooden look. He may see it somewhere in London or Spain or, or China. So this is the way how people are building in my home country. This is the reality, chicken transportation. We don't have energy. Not everybody own a fridge when you need chicken, fresh meat. You just take it, you cut the head, and you cook it. It's the best solution. What I'd like to say to you is that middle age and modern life are at the same time, at the same place. This is a road in Burkina Faso. This is another road, dust. And this is another view of a road in Burkina Faso. The city has a problem to provide the people with clean water, for example. So in, when you live there, you need this to keep water home, unless you will not have water. And sometimes people bring water like you can see here, home. This is Wagadougou. This is how people live in Burkina Faso. And women sometimes suffer the most from this situation. They have to bring water, water from far away, like you can see. Water is a problem because there is no water, there is no rain. But when the rain came, it became another problem. Last year, there was a catastrophe in Burkina Faso, killing some people and destroying completely a uh, part of the city. And this is also a problem. Let me bring you to the rural, rural zone in Burkina Faso, to the village where every African is coming from. I am from a village called Gando. Later we will talk more about it when you agree, but you don't have any change. <laughs> this is a compound. This is a big, big compound. The compound is a living place for generation. Sometimes four, five generations are living together. And this is a, a middle one. This is a, another small one, and this is a very small compound. In Africa, in a rural zone, people are forced to live together. You cannot survive when we are alone in this part of the world. And sometimes they have conflict, like here. And for example, he said, I am under pressure. I will move out and build my own compound. And he moves and just set himself here not to be under pressure, but he's still there. This is the way how people are leaving home. The architecture, it is looking beautiful. I didn't build it. I'm not able to do that. It was made by the people. How people build? They just stay and say, I'm going to build my compound. And the old community member come and try to help. They build and they have the house. What happened is, you see different color. It's quite beautiful. But there is a reason why it's like this. You start building, and after that, you will protect the house against rain. Because rain is the problem, and people are building with clay. What happened is, you need a plaster and color to protect the houses. But what happened is, you go to the nature, to the small forest, and try to find color, color or protection uh, material. And you just take what you can find from the nature. Nature is not a factory. So it happened that the house has different color. But sometimes people use Chemical, this is bitumized product. 
and look at what happened after a rainy season. The color disappeared, even so here, everything disappeared. And what you can see here is following. The compound has changed his color, and at the same time, he grows. And here, I will try to explain you something. There is no use to try to put an African compound under UNESCO control. I love UNESCO. But putting an African compound under, under UNESCO control is not a good way. Why? When you do that, that means you punish, mean punishing people. Because an African compound has to grow and shrink when there's a necessity. That is. And by the way, you will come one year and stress saying, oh, these African people, they don't respect convention because they changed the, the color. The people didn't, did not change the color. Nature made it. You understand me? So, clay is the most used building material. And it really works in a small size, like this. This is a big store, not Herald. No, not like this. Look at You can get cacahuete, peanuts. You can get cigarette. You can get pasties. You can get aspirin. You can get yeah, uh, other kind of cigarette, something to wash your clothes, and then to make your dress. And sometimes you can get uh, wine from, from Spain and from Italy. <laughs> it's a big, big, big store, a supermarket, and sometimes petrol. What happened is this store, there is no insurance for this store. What happened is when it crash, people come together, and in two days, they rebuild it. It's very easy. The problem we have there is to deal with big sizes. When you want to build something like this, a building bigger than this, you need technology, and which we don't own. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the difference between your culture and mine. Education is part, modern education, school education is part of your culture. And this remains for people in my home country, a dream, still a dream, and that's the difference.